What's going on everybody? Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish. And if you could do us a favor, go ahead and hit like and subscribe right now. We'll dive into this fly. And so today I want to tie a mayfly swimmer, or you might know it as the Isonychia. So in the vise, I've got the fire hole 523. And this is a size 10 because we're going for a pretty good size bug. And for the bead, spawn football bead in gold. And this is a six millimeter bead. So like we do, we're going to use some non-lead .020 and we're just going to make sure this bead stays where we want it to stay. So let's get five, six, seven wraps down there, whatever floats your boat or sinks your dropper. Like that, using the curved inside edge on this scissor, we'll try to round that cut edge over, smooth it out just a touch, and then we'll do the same on the back side. So keep the beefy side on the outermost portion of that hook, which for this hook, since it's jig style, is on the underside, and that will keep the keel properly hook point up. And at this point, we can throw some thread on here. For today's thread, got some uni thread. This is six aught camel. Just gonna get it started, trim out that tag end, and now to cinch down these wire wraps. Get some 45 degree angle wraps forward and back. A couple passes doing that way and then straight on and it'll pull all those little X's into the wraps of weighted wire and secure it like so. All right, so now I'm gonna get this thread all the way to the back and what I'm going to do is find the spot right there where it just starts to curve and I'm going to make a series of three or four wraps right here and they're not exactly right over each other they're very small X wraps on a stack like that and what this is going to do is create just a tiny little bump and why I want this bump is because when we tie in our tail this bump will splay the fibers as our thread meets it so they can't stay stuck together, they'll have to separate. And so for the tail, we've got some natural pheasant tail. This is the center tail. And just because every once in a while it's nice to be accurate, I'm going for three tails here, or three fibers of this pheasant tail. And when you're tying the Isonychia or any mayfly swimmer, they can have either two or three tails. Do the fish know how to count? Nope. So does it really matter that you're exact? Nope. What matters is that you enjoy tying these bugs and that you go out and fish them and catch fish with them. So those aren't exactly even. If we're gonna be picky here, let's be picky all the way. Let me get in here and find some good fibers. And now I'll do my best to just get three. Once you've got them, since these are going to come off the back here, I want roughly half a body length or shank length as my, my measure. And so once you've found that, go ahead and switch to your offhand. Just get them started on the bottom of this shank here. And touching wraps, get all the way back. And once you get back, to that little bump that you made, I'll, I'll get some pressure here and just watch. These should start to separate for me and you can give them a little bit of help. There's one, if I can get my fat fingers on it, we'll be good, there we go. And simply come back up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tie this all the way to right behind the weighted wire and the reason being it's all in the name of keeping an even underbody. Like so, mash those down and finish wrapping them down. Like so. All right, so now let me unstick this little guy and you can see these tails are splayed 
and you can mess with this a little bit after you've got them tied in. And there we go. Nothing to it so far. All right, so now we've got a couple elements here for this body. And the first being size brassy, ultra wire, and gold. Of course, to match that awesome looking spawn bead. And we're just going to tie that again, butt it up to the rear side of those weighted wire wraps, and then just get her tied down all the way back to where our tail is tied in, like so. Make sure that's securely tied in. All right, so if there's a tricky part, this is going to be it. I'm going back into this pheasant tail, but now I'm going to get a section that's maybe you know, 12 to 18 to 25 or so. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be shy on this one. So let's, let's go a more realistic approach here would be somewhere between an eighth and quarter inch section of fibers like this. I'm going to tie all these in on the top of this shank and I'm going to do it with the, the nice side facing the shank so that as I pull this back over, the fish and you and I get to see the nice looking side. So keep those tips as, as close together as you can. Gently get it started at an angle. And then once you do, you can kind of position it a little. Make sure this is going to stay right on top as much as you can. And be patient. There we go. That last wrap right there and at this point I'm just going to split those around the hook point and come back to them later. We do have some more body materials to get tied in here and again finish those fibers kind of right next to the weighted wire and trim out the portion we don't need and finish tying down. And then we've got one more element to tie in for our body and this is going to produce the gills of a swimmer, swimmer mayfly and so for the gills I've got ostrich from hairline and this is white and as you can see I've got four or five fibers here I'm not I'm not going to be shy on it because I want a nice dense body but it's more I, I'm going to be ribbing through it and everything else if you don't have sufficient fiber coming off of there it's not going to act like we want it to and we do want these little gills to be very visible because as far as recognizable features on these mayflies, it's the gills for the most part. you got tails that are recognizable, but the gills are constantly moving and not just for oxygen absorption, but also for a little bit of movement as well when they're swimming. It gives them a little propulsion and a wider surface area to grab move. Alright, so at this point I'm going to bring up all these ostrich hurls and start gently twisting them all together make one nice solid hurl. Now we're ready to wrap. Just make sure on that first wrap you've got it all the way back there and continue up and touching through, touching wraps. If you have to go ahead and Adjust by respinning it a little bit as you go. And once you've gotten to this point, you're going to be fine as far as having enough material. So let's go ahead and tie this off. These swimmer mayflies do have a, a fairly sizable thorax that is a true one third length of the body. So let's go ahead and trim these butt ends out of this ostrich. Thanks for playing. All right, so now we're going to take these fibers that we tied in on the top. I'm going to bring them forward and get one or two wraps over here and then just kind of mash these down with your finger. And so this is going to be the top portion of that body. And as we now get into this rib, Let's start to make some segmentations on this guy. So evenly spaced, be careful not to grab too much so that it, it wants to throw those fibers to the side. So just kind of keep track of it. Bring it back down with your thumb before you fully pull down and add 
final tension on the, each wire wrap, like so. And just wiggle that wire a little bit through there and you won't have to fight it quite as much. We're on our fifth wrap there and I'm happy with that. As you can see, now we have a very nice top to that fly, very pronounced segmentation, and it's got plenty of gills for breathing and propulsion. All right, trim that wire out. Use your thumbnail, whatever you wish, to push that end down, and now we'll trim out the butt ends of our pheasant. All right, well, we're getting there. So now we need to build the thorax for this guy. As you can see from underneath, we're pretty buggy. From on top, we're very buggy, and everything's looking great, but we, we've still got some work to do here. All right, so one more time, getting back into some more of this pheasant. Hope you guys love it, because we're using a lot of it. Now I'm looking for the wing case and so for this wing case, I'm really going big. And as far as a number of fibers, I'm well over quarter inch on this deal. Closer to half inch. And we're going to tie it in the exact same way. And at this point, if you want to do a flashback, go ahead and tie in some flash. Typically, though, on these Isonychias, they do not have a, a flash uh, for that wing case in the largest sizes. That's more on the, the smaller size guys. Uh, but by all means, if, if you like the flashback, it's, it's not going to hurt. And so now I'm just trying to measure here as I'm tying back. And you can see I've got all those fibers tied in for that wing case. I'm going to go ahead and trim these tips out. Got one, two little ones hanging on there for dear life. There we go. All right, so now we've got one more thing that I'm going to get pre-tied in, and that's going to be our legs, which for this I'm using a partridge feather, and I'm going to go ahead and pull those fibers down toward the base of the quill, and you see there's that one little nasty short one there, so I'm going to pull that up so I don't use it. I'm going to cut some of that tip off, and then I'm just going to cut down both sides of the quill and I'll show you what it looks like. Like so. And that's going to give me these little teeth which allow the thread to have something to hold onto. We're going to tie this concave side facing up. So it means convex side toward the hook shank. And the reason being when we wrap this, of course, the pretty side will be facing out. And that's what we want. Like so, find that tag and remove. All right, last element to add now. I do have three hurls of eyed peacock stick and this is the natural color. And just for a sake of keeping things simple, I'm gonna flip this guy over, get these tied in. Hopefully, there we go and keep them all together. All right. So now I will turn this over for you so you can see a little bit easier from the bottom side, I think, that one-third to two-third proportion. So we're going to have the body two-thirds and the thorax at one-third. If you can do that for most of your nymphs, you're going to be very successful. All right, so since we're in this position, everything's out of the way. I'm going to spin these peacock curls up, much like we did with the ostrich. I'm going to get this thread back up to behind the bead, like so. And now, let's wrap that thorax. And there we go. On this one, we'll catch it. And tie off. Oh, that peacock. Couple wraps, one more just because, and then we'll get in front of it for two wraps. Cut that out. Now at this point, you could also just cut a V in this feather and simply lay it on top before bringing that 
that wing case over but I like this look so I'm going to get that thread for sure in front of our partridge I'm going to just start wrapping it while keeping all the fibers flowing to the back like so that's a pretty buggy look I'm going to bring it back up and tie off our feather and three good wraps bring it back one or two in front and trim this sucker out oh baby getting buggy in here all right so now what I'm going to do is take my bodkin make sure I don't have any crazily trapped fibers I'm going to make a little separation in the middle doesn't have to be perfect just something to get those legs out of the way and once you do now let's bring up all those pheasant tail fibers that we tied in for that wing case work them through keep them all together as best you can flat without twisting that's the tricky part once you've got it down go ahead and catch it with a thread wrap and then I will show you what this looks like as we wrap it so you can see that wing case now is fairly pronounced and let's bring them back get a couple thread wraps and now we can safely trim out the rest of our wing case like so and now all we need to do is add a couple whip finishes and then we're ready for the final stuff let's tidy up our our trimmed ends here just a little bit with some thread make a nice little collar there of thread and we'll finish. So the whole point of this nymph is not just the looks. This is going to have a lot of the subtle movement that the fish recognize from these mayflies, at least in a nymphal form. And that's what we're all about. Recognition, they'll eat. Trim out that thread. I see one stray partridge there. All right looking pretty good and these fibers are just a little long but I'd rather have them a little long than a, than short so now for our cement I'm coming in with some Loon UV clear fly finish and I'm going to make sure I get a coat right down the back of all that pheasant and come back up get the wing case and then I'm gonna make sure all these thread wraps just get a little kiss of this resin and we will cure all of it at the same time. Less is more when it comes to your resin. If it, if it doesn't have a chance to cure, well then it really wasn't worth putting on there. Alright, let's see how this thing looks. Shaping up really buggy here. I'm a huge fan of this fly and so are the fish. You guys should definitely have about 400 of these in your fly box. That's a good start anyway. And there we have it. Swimming Mayfly Nymph, also known as Isonychia. And I hope you guys do tie this. I hope you love it. If you enjoyed the video, again, please hit like and subscribe. And we will see you guys on the water.